afternoon. I'm Karen Sism Gunn. I'm currently serving as Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at Cal State Long Beach. And I'm also a member of the Network Advisory Board. So I first became involved with the network in 2000, the 2018-19 academic year, where I served uh, as a member of the Middle Leadership Academy team. Uh, and, and that was my first engagement. I was actually asked by our provost, um, Dr. Pam Oliver, not only to be a member of the team, but to, to consider serving as the leadership for the team. And so when I learned, um, when I began to, to uh, deepen my understanding about the scope uh, and purpose of the Middle Leadership Academy and the, the dual purpose that this academy can achieve, right? Not only development of a particular project or initiative focus that's beneficial to a campus's equity um, agenda, but also to identify members on that campus to draw into this work and to bring them up through the, the MLA, I'll call it now, architecture, to position them uh, to, to, to you know, contribute to thinking about um, strategies and, and initiatives that could be beneficial for that campus. To come out of your campus environment, the 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 you know the vibe and the meetings and all of those time commitments to really set aside time with colleagues who are com also equally committed to a project that you've co-conceived right to be able to over the period of a year work through the development of of that project also again having because we are a system, we're a comprehensive system. There are some shared ideals and aims that we have. And particularly I'll think about the GI 2025 initiative, right? All of our campuses in one way or another are approaching this work. And so when you get into the kinds of in-person sessions that, we, that we're able to engage in through the Middle Leadership Academy, you get a chance to, to, to hear and, and discuss and think about different vantage points and different um, strategies for approaching this work. There are faculty members, there are middle leaders who in their day-to-day -day work engage with students. And you know, they may be they may be concerned about some of the profiles, some of the the positions that our students are in. And, and at the level of one's unit, you know, if you're in the advising center or where, or career services or wherever you may be, sure there's power at being a, a change agent and an influencer in, in, in that capacity. The MLA structure was critical in, you know, helping me to expand my leadership acumen. It first of all, it, it gave us an opportunity to engage with like-minded individuals from other campuses in the CSU. And then also another element I think of the MLA that was really beneficial was the, it was a kind of a gallery experience where we would develop our ideas and, and almost put them on display. And the other teams would would kind of almost like a poster presentation would come around and engage you get engage with you about your particular projects and the ideas that you were presenting. So I think positioning um, us in uh, around our colleagues and in the midst of our colleagues in that kind of of environment, um, giving us the the free space uh, to be able to work as a team from our own campus and all of the dynamics that go into that cumulative contribution from those thinkers on campus really gave you from a leadership standpoint, how a team comes together, how a team kind of owns their um, uh, expertise and abilities and value that they bring to a particular project. I think it was very, very beneficial to have that experience in that context. The ability to influence strategic thought around equity, right? 
um, through the vehicle that the Academy offered. It was a project, it was an initiative, it was a collaborative group of individuals, not from just one office, but from several points of, of influence on the campus that, that were able to invest in this work. And so I think having leverage to focus and to lean in on equitable practices for our students was very beneficial. I, I connect that also to change management because of the nature of the work that we were involved in as it related to equity and, and the change that you uh, think about in terms of an organization that's going through and exploring ways to, and, and strategies to, to, to get at equity. I think this vehicle was, was, was very uh, important for our campus. Uh, and being able to to shine light on and to bring, you know, some level of additional structure beyond GI 2025, beyond, you know, the, the reality that equitable practices are the right thing to do. You know, it was important for our project to have tangible outcomes that, that were quantifiable. You know, there, there are anecdotal ways to, to think about equity. But it was important for us the way we had our assessment framework set up that we'd be able to point back and see and correlate. These are strategies that, you know, we've envisioned are, can be powerful in the classroom. And these are measures that we can lay beside those strategies. And, and if not show causation, at least be able to determine whether or not there is correlation with with the deploying these types of instructional strategies and the impacts they have on students in terms of of performance in terms of you know whether or not students are are less likely to say if it's a gatekeeping course to to drop the class or stay in the class and so those were were important data driven ways to power conversations around equity and around why change around equitable strategies, why change is important and how change can be powerful.